In this video, I'm at Cogton for a place session in early August. Apart from Long Walk, this is one of my favourite stretches of Chesil, and it has been quite kind to me in the past. I've parked in the National Trust car park, walked down a steep hill, and taken the path to the left. Arriving at the spot I wanted to fish, I was a little bit dismayed to find there was a yacht moored there, so I've set up 50 yards or so before it. Anyone who regularly fishes Chesil knows that although it all looks the same, 50 yards can make a big difference could be the difference between catching and not catching. I'll explain in a minute, but first a look at the bait and the gear I'm using. Black lug and ragworm is what the place like. My preference is for continental star rods and fixed ball reels, and I'm using 20 pound braid to get the distance required. Rigs are personal preference, but I like free hook clip down rigs for short snuds and loop rigs. If my baits are coming back stripped and not seeing the bites of my loop rigs, I might change that rig over to one of my specialised sole rigs with much shorter snuds. You stand a much better chance of catching place here if you can put your baits out 100 yards plus. So clipping down your rigs to make them streamlined is quite important. Distance is one thing, but in order to do consistently well here, and the same applies to West Bexington, you really need to be able to cast onto clay patches. So how do you know you're fishing where there's a clay patch? That generally comes with experience, having fished the area many times in the past. Once you've located one of these areas, you make a mental note of the features that are behind you. That might be a field boundary, a house or trees on the hill behind you, or a lake or pond hidden by the reeds behind the shingle bank. That's how I know that yacht was moored exactly where I wanted to fish. If I don't catch here, I'll move to where that yacht is once it's gone. And a good tip for anyone who hasn't fished chesel before, moving if you don't catch is quite a good idea. You might find that you're casting onto shingle or sand all day, but a 50 yard walk in either direction might place you onto the clay beds. That's not to say that you won't catch fishing over shingle or sand, however the clay beds seem to produce a lot more. Familiarity with the geology of the area may also help, but I'll leave that for a future video. You'll have noticed that I've set up a third rod, a much lighter one, that's for chucking out feathers if it's too quiet on the place front. The place are likely to show up at particular states of the tide, so in between that I'll be having a go try and catch some mackerel. The mackerel aren't always here, and if that's what you're targeting, you're much better off going to West Bexington or Abbotsbury, which are generally more consistent, particularly this year. As I'm checking to see what the tidal pull is doing, I run through the locational details. Chesil runs for 18 miles from West Bay to start of Portland Island. Here I'm identifying some of the venues. A few places are caught at a deeper ferry bridge end, which is why I'm at Cogden. It's from West Bay to West Bexington where most of the place action is. Freshwater Beach, Hive and Swire are the notable areas, but I prefer to go to Cogden since I generally know it better. You approach Cogden via the B3157 and park in the National Trust car park. There are some good marks to the right, but I generally walk towards the left, towards West Bexington. Here I've identified the precise location of where I fished. I could have walked further, but this was enough for me on this occasion. And although I was really looking forward to fishing, I was also conscious of that long walk back, and particularly that hill. Well, that didn't take long. I'll get my first bite. Let's put my mind at ease, since it feels like I've got something on. A great start. That's my first place of the day, and I needn't have worried about that boat. It's not huge, but it's a lovely looking fish and very lively. It swallowed a bait, but it was easy to get a hook out and can be returned. It 
It was a free hook rig that did the business, and the fish was caught on a black log. I find that timing of sessions is quite important since the place won't always feed at all states of the tide and this can vary at different locations at this end of Chisholm. At Cogden I prefer to start roughly halfway up the tide, fish it over high water and down towards low. I like to catch the periods when the tidal pull has changed direction and when it's slackening off. Having said that there isn't much of a tidal pull at all today. However I started just before the pull changed direction to going from my right to my left and that's when I've caught my first fish. I'm now hoping to catch either side of high water and then on the ebb, particularly as it's going towards low. Using laser without wires helps because you can drag your baits. Sometimes that's one of the most important things you can do to induce a bite. There are times however that you won't be able to hold a bottom unless you're using laser with wires. So you need to come prepared for both eventualities. But bear in mind that long walk will restrict the amount of gear you can take with you.
After that early fish, there's a long period of inactivity. However, it looks like that boat's about to move. Since I've caught a place, I decide not to move. And that looked like it's a good idea. I strike it to my second bite. However, if it was a fish there, it's come off. Quick going of feathers. After a short while, I'd give up on that. If there were any mackerel there, I would have caught one straight away, probably. Now that's an interesting distraction. I'm thinking that could be Wayne Hand looking for someone to coach. I get a series of little tugs and I put into something with a little bit of weight. Unfortunately, this is the first of two spider crabs I'll catch today. To be honest, they weren't much of a problem, and I only lost four hooks to them. High water's come and gone, and that didn't produce any fish. However, since it started ebbing properly, I get my next bite. And that's more like it. That's a decent sized place. This one's quite chunky, so it's a keeper. Time to move the gear down.
Didn't take long for the next bite. That's another decent fish, but the spider crab on the top snud made it feel like a monster. The loot rig doesn't seem to be working today, so it's time to start baiting up one of my specialist sole rigs. Although I'm not night fishing, I am hopeful of catching a sole when the light starts to fade. Failing that, this is still a good rig for catching place. This is a free snud version and somewhat beefed up to the rigs I normally use for soles. That's because Chesil can always throw up a surprise fish you don't want to lose anything big just because you've got really light hook links on. I place the link in the top right hand corner and in the description for this video for a tutorial on how I make the two snud version of these rigs. Well, that looks like it's a good change. That sole rig looks like it's straight into action. As I'm clipping down my other rig, I notice a bite on the other rod. It's not a soul, but I'm still happy with that. It's 
not the biggest, so it could go back. Sun's straight in my eyes now, so the cap goes on, but I'm still getting bites, and those bites are becoming a little bit more confident now. That one's definitely worth striking into. Another decent and nice looking fish. This is on the top snood of my sole rig, which has a size 6 Aberdeen hook. This place has lovely markings, but it's destined for the frying pan.
place are really coming on strong now. And it's the soul rig that seems to be catching the bulk of them now. I'm now not even getting time to rebait. Unusually, a lot of my fish today are being deep hooked. This one's not that deep, but even so, it still needed to be disgorged. Although the flood tide and high water wasn't any good, it's now definitely making up for it. Most of the fish so far have been to Black Lug. Unfortunately, this is one of only two fish that have come off. In this case, it was a hook length that parted, and I think it had been worn down by those spider crabs. bite straight after dragging the rig. Lip hooked this one.
The sun has started to set and the tip is still going round. On my normal rig, I'm now letting the bottom snow to fall below the lead, but it doesn't really seem to make any difference today. No double shots, but I have caught on all of the snuds. I've caught on ragworm, but the black lug seems to be outperforming it. Most of the fish seem very fit and lively. All but two have been of keeper size. Once again, I'm not able to finish baiting up before the next bite. Something different this time. A small smooth hound which is the suit itself. It's foul hooked, but it will go back unharmed. Because the light started getting too dark to continue filming, I'll finish on this last fish. It is a place. It's one of 13 I've caught today. Another terrific session on chisel. It's not always like this, but when it is, it's absolutely brilliant fishing. Oh, and just to top it off, I did catch a sole, but it was already too late to be filming then. It was sizeable, so I took it along with four plates, all of which were over a pound, with the largest about a pound and a half.